So hello, everyone. Welcome, Carly, to our clear <laughs> code chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, thank you for being here. So Carly is a graduate student, yoga instructor, and a nature lover and had acne for four years before she found the clear code, which sucks, but makes me so happy that she finally did find us. And I'm so excited to chat with you today about your clear code journey, Carly. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. (laughs) Okay, great. So we can kind of jump right in. And I always like to ask, like, tell me a little bit about your journey. When did you first start struggling with acne? What did you do? All the things. Yeah. So like you said, I've been struggling with acne for like close to four years now. And my acne started like randomly. I mean, it wasn't so random, but it really started to get prominent when I was around like 19. And before that, like now that I've been in this, uh, in the clear code for a while, I'm realizing that I really was actually struggling with acne before that, but it just wasn't as severe. So when I was about 19, it started to get, you know, worse and I was struggling since then. But so I tried basically like everything to heal it. And, you know, eventually I found you. So here I am. (laughs) Do you try like birth control pill, Accutane? Did you do all those? When I first started, I really wasn't trying anything to to fix it. I just kind of was like, Oh, this is here now, you know, I don't really know what to do about it. And it took me about like six to eight months before I was like, okay, let me try to find something. So I had went and got in a facial and I got so many extractions done. And that I think, I think that just kind of like set me up for disaster because after that, it just got so much worse. Um, I remember coming home from my first facial. It was the first one I've ever gotten. And my face literally just had like scabs all over and I was in so much pain. And then from there, it just, you know, like I said, it got worse. So then for a while, I really didn't do anything because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what just happened with that. <laughs> let me yeah, totally. let me not do that. And um, I, as you know, I was struggling with some yeast issues. So I like had a feeling inside that it had to do with the yeast, but I didn't, you know, nobody would tell me that it was connected. So yeah. I was seeing gynecologists like at least twice a month trying to discuss with them different things. And I would always say to them, do you think my acne is, you know, a part of this? Because my yeast struggles and my acne kind of came at the same exact time when I was around 19. And I just had a feeling that it was connected in some way. So when I would go to the gyno, I would ask them and, you know, of course they were just like, we don't know, you know, we have no idea. We we don't really know what to do for you. And it was about like a year of monthly visits to the gyno. And I mean, I knew, I knew that they didn't, they didn't specialize in skin, but I just was like, they have to know like what's going on here. Yeah. So like I said, for about a year and then towards the end of that, I, um, just started asking, I was like, do you, does this have to do with what I'm eating? Like, do you think, because I started finding out that candida and yeast had to do with food. And I was like, well, what's going on? Yeah. 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 Like, does this have to do with food? So then I had a few more months in between then I stopped going to the gyno because they just kept putting me on different medications there that weren't working. And was making things worse. And then I saw, I eventually met with a nutritionist and I learned from her that it definitely did have something to do with food um, because I figured out that candida was linked with skin and, you know, a bunch of other stuff. But I was put onto an extremely strict diet that I literally only ate meat and vegetables, like not even fruit. I didn't have any types of grains or carbs Um, And it just was so strict. I felt like I was withering away. Like I felt like I couldn't concentrate. I was losing weight rapidly. And, um, you know, so I did that for like about a month or two. And then I had to stop that. Yeah. And then I just stopped everything altogether. I went to the dermatologist. They put me on spironolactone, which obviously didn't really turn out well. And they were like, there's nothing left for you. And then I did a bunch of Googling and I found you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry that, sorry, that was really long-winded, but. Oh, yeah. I love long-winded. So you felt like too, you had kind of gotten to the end of your rope with things. As yeah. Well. Yeah. Because after the first nutritionist that I had met with, I really like 
I thought like that it was only going to have to be like that strict diet or nothing. So I decided to go to the dermatologist because like I just kind of felt like giving up on the food. Yeah. Like diet aspect because my first nutritionist really kind of scarred me. And Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was either I was going to suffer and be so restricted for the rest of my life, or maybe I would just take the easy way out and take a pill, which I never really wanted to do because I always like had an intuition, like feeling that it was linked to my diet. And ever since, you know, the, the beginning, I thought that. But I was getting to the point where I was just so fed up. I just wanted a quick fix. When I was at the dermatologist, oh my gosh, I completely skipped this out. I first tried tretinoin. And that was probably the worst part of my acne that I've ever suffered with. This was about, I would say, you know, a year ago today was when I hit my lowest point and they were putting me on tretinoin and my face was literally peeling off mm, and it was yeah. to the point where it was burning when I would talk. It would burn yeah. like when I was sleeping, it just was literally peeling off and more and more pimples were coming. Mm. And it got to the point where I had to rub Vaseline on my face every day because the, I would go to the dermatologist and they'd be like, well, just keep using it. That's fine. And right. I'd be like, but is my skin supposed to be literally peeling off of my face and they'd be like no like it's okay it's doing what it has to do so I just started putting Vaseline on my face which I also knew was not a good thing because you know I've heard that's poor like poor clogging and then eventually I just was so fed up that I was like okay give me spironolactone and then I went on that for like three months and it just kept getting worse and the the dermatologist just was like, you know, this is it. This is it or Accutane. And I had had a friend that went on Accutane and just, you know, didn't have a good experience. So I finally called you because I was <laughs> watching your YouTube videos and okay. that's when we met. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Do you remember what YouTube video you like found or looked for to find me? Um, I'm pretty sure it was like hormonal acne. I just was searching hormone hormonal acne and diet or like I had looked up your yeast videos because I was suffering with that too so gotcha. yeah and I I was watching your videos probably for like a year before I even reached out because I was trying to do it on my own but it just was I was fed up and then I would just end up eating a box of cookies and on my couch crying <laughs> yes I think yeah. that is a common challenge for a lot of us women it's like a strength and a weakness, right? Is we have this like superhero thing where we're like, I can do it on my own. It's fine. I can figure it out. I'll Google. No problem. I'll Google it. Yeah. And then what happens is a year goes by, two years go by, three years go by. And suddenly we've wasted, I wasted tens of thousands of dollars. So much time and energy. We're worse off than we were before. We're more frustrated. We're more at the end of our rope. It's impacted our confidence worse. Right, like yeah. So I, I feel you. So were you nervous about the clear code? I think you were. You could talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I was definitely nervous. I think it was more just because I was like so scarred from my last nutritionist. And I was really worried about the financial aspect because in the beginning of my journey, I did waste so much money on like products. Yeah. Especially because my family, like none of nobody in my family has ever struggled with acne mm-hmm. and not even in like my distant family. Like everybody just was confused. They, my mom would just, and I love my mom dearly, (laughs) but she just would always say like, I don't know what's going on. I never had acne. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what, like, like, I don't know what you're doing. And she would tell me, you know, old fashioned remedies and, and, I don't even want to mention them because I'm like, this is just not it mom. Okay. No, that's not going to work. Yeah. And So it was just, it was really isolating because even like my friends, you know, I know that they meant well, but they'd always be like, well, you know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And I'm like, guys, I've tried everything. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know what it is. And it just was really isolating to not have anybody like friends or family that had acne, you know? What do you think? So you were nervous. You felt very isolated. And I remember we hopped on the phone twice, right? We had like two. Yeah. What was the thing that made you say, okay, I just got to do this? Or what was the tipping point for you, do you think? I would say because I, so when I got, I think when I got off of spironolactone, that was when 
we had our first call and I was in a really low place. I actually, I actually journal a lot. And uh, like (laughs) since the end of the year now, I was going back to my journals from last December Mm -hmm. and I just literally every entry that I wrote just was like, I'm so done. I don't know what else to do. I've reached like the lowest point. I like, there's nothing left. I've tried everything. Yeah. And I remember like after our first call, I was like, oh, I really want to do this. But I just, the you know, I was like scared. I didn't want to put more money into it. And I was like, let me just do this on my own. Yeah. So then I don't know how long it was between our first and our second call. I think it was a few months. Yeah, and during those few months, maybe six weeks. Yeah. During those few months, I was just really trying to eat as best as I could. I was watching your videos like every day. I would play them in the car at home. And um, I was really trying my best, but I just still felt like I was missing something. Like I didn't know what I was missing. So then I just was like, I need to do this. I need to make this step. I need to do this for myself. Like I'm so tired of feeling this way. I Again, I've wasted so much money. I need to just do something that will take care of it once and for all. (laughs) So I love that's when I called you again. Yeah. Okay. So kind of just like end of your rope feeling like too, like you've tried everything and you're just ready for a different shift. Gotcha. And then what do you think that happens for basically everyone? I would say too, it's a common thing to feel just like trying it on your own for an extended period of time. And then finally just say, you know what? I give up. Somebody help me. Yeah. (laughs) And okay. So when you joined, what would you say some of the things that helped you the most initially were like some of the things that you felt immediate relief about, or even had like, Oh, that's what's going on. Were there any aha moments when you joined? Yeah. I mean, definitely just having the community, like having like other people that were also going through this, because like I said, I was so isolated and I know this might sound a little bit weird, but like, it just felt so nice to see other people with acne because I was (laughs) like, Oh my gosh, like, Thank God. Why am I alone? And I finally felt like oh, I'm not alone. Like, like these people are also going through the same thing. And like, I remember going on and seeing, you know, people writing like skin wins and stuff like that. And I just was like, oh, ah, like okay. I could take a deep breath. Another thing was also like, and I know this is like really small too, but it was just like, I remember watching the first module of it and you saying like, you need to make the shift of this is going to happen. Like Mm -hmm. this is going to work and just have like hope and just have faith that like this is going to work. And ever since then, like every day I've just repeated to myself, like I'm healing more every day. Like this is going to be the end of this journey. And I, obviously I'm confident in yeah. that still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. It's such a key thing. Like I will tell you the clients. So we have Carly's mentioning, we have for people watching, we have skin wins in the clear code group, our Facebook group. And I asked that everyone share their skin wins and it is wild. Like the more that people share their wins, two clients can come in. Everyone's very different, right? But two clients can come in kind of similarly as humans and profiles for acne and one will share their skin wins a lot and one doesn't say much. And the one that shares their skin win usually improves faster. It's kind of insane. I think that is such a big fundamental part of like focusing on all the things that are working, especially when you have acne, it becomes an identity, right? Like this like all encompassing constant thing that you're constantly thinking about is like you're a person with acne. When you make the shift to being like, "Wait, wait, 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 this is actually fixing, like this is getting better everything is so different, right? It like, yeah. It's formative. Was there a mindset shift? So was that like the biggest mindset shift that you feel like you made? Yeah, definitely. And still like now that like daily, because obviously like the journey is not over. I'm still yeah. learning and, you yeah. know, whatever with scarring and stuff like that. But like, I just really loved to make changing that mindset because I just really was like, I'm going to be 55 and still have acne. Like, I really just thought this was my life. Like you said, it was my identity. I was like, this is just who I am. I'm just this person. Nobody understands me. And this will just be it. So making that mind- mindset shift really changed everything for me because I was like, this is it. This is going to end. I'm going to be happy again. You know, I'm going to feel like myself again. I'm going to have confidence. I'm not going to want to hide when I walk into a room. So that really, really helped me a lot. 
Yeah. Do you feel like, or rather, what do you feel like the clear code has helped you the most with? If you had to pick, I would say, I mean, besides like the nutrition and overall feeling my best, um, because, because like this last year has been a really big shift for me in becoming more active since now I'm a yoga teacher and like, you know, I just try to be active every day. I feel that the nutrition aspect of it has changed my life completely. I feel like I never get bloated anymore after I eat. I have never felt better about my digestive system. Like all of that has been amazing, but definitely like the mindset of just being more positive and just looking at each day, like I'm excited because I have more confidence and I don't, again, don't feel like I have to hide and you know, am excited to talk to people because it actually, for a little bit, I actually became like isolated socially too, because I just didn't even want to talk to people because I was like, all they're looking at is my acne. Yeah. And I wouldn't even, especially in the beginning of teaching like yoga, um, I really just was so petrified to get in front of a group because I was like, oh, they're just going to look at my acne the whole time. They're not even going to want to do yoga, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was a really, you know, it was a big deal for me, the confidence boost. Oh, that's amazing. Will you tell me more, a little bit more about that? Because yeah, like we watched the journey, right? So you struggled with acne for four years. You did everything. You didn't want to do Accutane, but you tried all the crazy other things from lactone. You knew there was a link between candida and your acne. We can talk about that too quickly. And that being said though, can you tell me a little bit more about how it's impacted your confidence? And it sounds like it's making it so that you feel like you can grow your career in a new way, which is incredible. And yeah. I thought that you had friends comment about your skin over the <laughs> week too. So tell us about that. Yeah. So I mean, overall, like the confidence boost has really just helped me with, you know, because my job, I, I have like three different jobs yeah. and they're all very with working with people. So yeah. I'm, I'm a receptionist, mm-hmm. I'm a yoga instructor and I'm a painting instructor. So all of these things are like, people are looking at me constantly and I just feel that that mindset change and that confidence boost has helped me just become like grow more as a person because I am putting myself out there more and I'm being more outgoing, which I never really have been my whole life. This is definitely a new thing for me to be more outgoing and especially to be on a stage painting and stuff. Um, but also when, um, I'm working and I get compliments and stuff like that on my skin, it really does make me happy. (laughs) It really, yeah. Yeah. And so Um, the people around you, they've comment, they like have noticed that your skin has shifted. Yeah, definitely. And I've, and it's been more and more recently, which has been really great. Um, I was actually at work the other day and, um, somebody had came in and they were struggling with acne and, and, you know, they were complaining to me and and I totally understand and I was recommending them your name and I was like oh this is her on Instagram you know you gotta check her out she's changed my life so happy yeah. that's like the best compliment obviously that you could ever get from anyone is saying like oh go find this person they'll help you and they'll change things. yeah and um, especially because if if somebody had told me about you like when I first started I feel like you wouldn't would have just done it you know <laughs> because okay. Because I've, because I've always had that intuition that it was linked to diet and just constantly being told by doctors and by different people who are supposed to know about this stuff that, that it's not linked at all, you know, frustrating. Yeah. If you could go back in time or even tell your 19 year old self something about your acne, anything, what would it be? What piece of advice would you give yourself? I I would say just listen to like, what's in your head, like listen to yourself because I, like I said, I just always knew and, and I let it take over so much of my life. And I feel like I stopped myself from growing for so many different things because of it. And how are you feeling? Two more questions. How are you feeling about your skin today, Carly? How are things doing? I'm feeling really great. I feel like, uh, like I said, like the journey is still going and there is still more to learn, but I do feel overall, like I have way more um, control over my skin. I feel like I do know when I, when I'm breaking out, I have a way better idea of why it's happening. Yeah. Again, overall, I just, my body just feels way better. Uh, and, you know, like my stomach and digestive system and, um, you know, it's, 
It's really great. Amazing. And what is like the number one best thing that's come out of joining the Clear Code, if you had to define it? I don't know. It's so hard to pick just one. <laughs> you can do two or three if you want. I'm open. <laughs> yeah, to I have to say two, and I've already mentioned them, but it's definitely one, the confidence, like, and knowing, and knowing exactly why I'm breaking out, knowing what I can do to help it or, you know, to make it easier and knowing just what my body needs to yeah. stay clear, which is just huge because when you're Googling all this stuff, you don't know exactly what's going on with you and everybody's different. So everybody needs something different yeah. and to know exactly what I need to stay clear is amazing. And um, just like the nutrition, I feel like I have such a better idea of nutrition yeah. in general and like what I should be eating to be healthy and, you know, to make sure that my body has energy and, you know, yeah, so, so those are two really great things that I got. That makes me so happy. Is there anything else you'd like to add that I missed that I didn't touch on? I uh, well, I did. I did want to mention this to you. I don't know if you you'll want to like edit this, but I didn't mention that I was on birth control for I didn't mention that. Okay. okay. And I should have mentioned that. Okay. <laughs> I feel okay. like. Okay. Yeah. So um, were you on the birth control pill, Carly? I was on birth control. So I had started birth control at age 15 yep. um, because my PMS was really bad and I had really heavy periods. So I went on birth control and I was on it for, I think, four to five years. So this is what I wanted to mention in the beginning is that when I was younger, I started noticing well, now I started noticing that back then I was having hormonal breakouts because they would always be in the same place on my chin. I and that's right. Yeah. And this is still like that. That was always my problem area was my chin and mm -hmm. right here in between my eyebrows. That's okay. always whenever I get my period. But when I was younger, like looking at back at pictures of myself when I was younger, I was breaking out here. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I get a little bit frustrated with myself because I'm like, I knew something was going on with this area of my face. And it obviously got worse when I got older. But when I um, started birth control, that's when I started to break out here on oh, my chin. Interesting. Yeah. And then so I started getting acne and, um, you know, it started getting worse and worse. And I started developing problems with yeast. So I decided to come off of birth control mm. and then things got even worse. So I felt like something it had to do with hormones because my birth control, I was like, oh, what if it's changing? You know, I think that's why I'm starting to break out. So that's when I got off of birth control. And then it was just a whirlwind of changes. I got an IUD. I tried that right after. And I only had that in for about three to four months, which I think that also massively impacted my hormones yeah. because I came off of that because I was having extreme issues with that. And then, you know, all of the gynecologist visits, they kept pushing me for birth control. And I just was like, no, I need to get all off of all of this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And the moral really, again, it always goes back to the same thing, which is um, trust your gut. Like you had the correct intuitive yeah. response from the beginning. Same for me. Every time I went to the dermatologist, every time for 15 years, I would say, are you sure it's not what I'm eating? And they would be yeah. like, you're crazy. you're crazy or you're stupid. And I'd be like, yeah. okay. And I got so many like panels of blood work done. I oh. once got so much blood work done that I passed out on the table and they just, I woke up in the dermatologist. It was, it, I mean, not dermatologist. It was in the gynecologist's office and I woke up and, um, I just was like, what happened? And they were like, we think we took too much blood. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> oh my God. And here's the thing. I would say so many people come to me wanting to talk about blood work. And I always just say, there's no like thing that's going to tell you why you have acne. I mean, I'd say maybe in 5% of people, that's a high number too. There's yeah. some like high specific marker of problems, right? But for yeah. other most people, like it's not, you're going to see like our body acne is systemic. And so it's a big whole thing that's happening. It's not one, yeah. thing, not like a pizza where you can just take out a piece of the pie and everything gets better. Like it's not that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Well connected. 
I think one of the only good things that came from all of the blood work was they were testing my blood sugar levels. Yes. And this was while I was on this extreme diet where I was okay. like fatigued okay. all the time. I had no sugar whatsoever, like not even fruits and mm-hmm. nothing. So I had went and gotten my blood sugar levels checked and they were high. They were extremely high, even though I had fasted and like fasting glucose levels were high. Yeah. So I was, I was like, which is a oh. response to be honest, your body. Just, yeah. Yeah. But I was like, oh, maybe it has something to do with like blood sugar. So then I started looking into that. And now fast forward. Now I do know that blood sugar management is a big part of, you know, my clear code. So I feel like that also kind of opened up my eyes a little bit, even though it was not a great experience getting all that blood work, but you know. I was yeah. like, how could my blood sugar levels be high, even though I, you know, have barely eaten anything? <laughs> yeah, that's so difficult. Oh my gosh, Carly. Yeah. What a journey. And now we're here. Yeah. yeah. And now we're here and life is good. So that makes me so happy. And yeah, I'm so thankful for your journey and for you sharing more about your journey. Cause I know a lot of people are going to benefit from hearing it because a lot of people are going to see themselves in it for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I've, and now that I feel like I've healed so much, I just like want to go out and tell everybody about the clear code because I'm just like, oh my gosh, you need to do this for yourself, please. Like, you know, because I, I really, um, you know, I really do obviously resonate with people who are struggling with acne because I had it and I'm just like, like, please know that there's something out there for you that's going to help you one day if you're willing, you know? Yeah, that makes, and if someone had, if someone was on the fence, what would you tell them about the clear code? I would tell them that although it is, you know, it is work. And I feel like obviously for some people, it is a big lifestyle change to be eating so much healthier. For me, I feel like that aspect was kind of easier than most because I already was eating pretty clean and I do really enjoy cooking and I love to make new meals and stuff like that. So I do feel like that is the hardest part for most people is adjusting their diet. But I mean, for me, like having clear skin just was, I would do anything, you know? So as long as it was (laughs) guaranteed and that's what I got. So I'm so happy that you're here, Carly. And thank you again for sharing your clear code journey. It's going to inspire so many people. Yeah, of course. Thank you. (laughs) My pleasure.